Schuller and Stefan Adolfo, the title is Invariant Densities in the Yaman Responents in Random Piece Wide Linear Maps. So thank you very much. Okay. Remember that those 25, 25 minutes presentations, mm -hmm. 5 minutes questions. Mm -hmm. And you will remind me. Oh, yeah, yes. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to my presentation. Uh, my name is Jin Yan, and uh, I'm a second year PhD student at Queen Mary University of London. Uh, so, my topic today is uh, invariant densities and Lyapunov exponents uh, in random piecewise linear map, uh, which uh, this title is uh, slightly different from. Uh, uh, from from uh, you saw in the uh, like in the schedule, so I apologize for that. Uh, so first, uh, I will give you the outline of my talk. So first of all, I will introduce the the problem, which is from deterministic uh, to uh, random dynamical systems. And uh, in the first part of my talk, uh, I will uh, discuss about ergodicity characterized by the invariant densities. So in the first session, uh, I, will, uh, I will state the theorem by Pelikan uh, for the existence and the uniqueness of this invariant density. And in the second section, uh, I will uh, give some numerical simulations to verify this result. And in the third session, uh, uh, we will extract uh, the exact form for this invariant density curve. And in the second part, uh, we will study the chaoticity of our random system in terms of Lyapunov exponents. And, uh, and at last, I will give a summary and outlook and the references. So let's start with the motivation. Uh, so this is uh, 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 from the Yuzuru and the Renner's uh, recent paper about anomalous diffusion in random dynamical systems. So we consider uh, a discrete dynamical systems uh, xn plus one equals to Txn, uh, which uh, in each time step we choose randomly one of these two maps. So T1 is AX mode one, where A is bigger than one, so it's an expansion map. And uh, T2 is BX, B is between zero and one, which is a contraction map. And uh, we, at each time step, we choose T1 with probability P, and uh, otherwise we choose T2. So we choose T2 with probability one minus P. And uh, we know that when P is zero or one, this system is completely deterministic and uh, it's linear and it has been well studied. Uh, what we want to study is uh, when P is in between zero and one. So in this case, the, uh, the system is random and there might be some interesting transition from this uniformly chaotic case to the global contraction case. So, um, it's not working. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. So, as a toy model, we set this uh, expansion rate as two and uh, the contraction rate as uh, one over two, and uh, we restrict our dynamics uh, onto the unit uh, interval zero one. So, for so for, for these two maps, uh, this is T1, which is just uh, the Bernoulli shift, and T2 is the contraction map on the unit interval. So in below here, this is a typical chaotic trajectory generated by this Bernoulli shift. And uh, this one is quite, uh, it's not clear, because, uh, but it's just, uh, um, so it decays to the zero fixed point, because at each time step, <coughs> you decrease the value uh, by two. So, uh, so it uh, will decrease to zero. And uh, we can also understand this dynamics uh, by the invariant density. So in this plot uh, is the invariant density, which is a uniform constant over the whole unit interval. 
which means uh, after a, a long time, uh, the points will, di uh, will distribute it uniformly on the unit interval. But uh, for the contraction map, we have this uh, delta function uh, located at zero. So which means after a long time, uh, your point will decay to this zero fixed point. Yeah, okay. so, so this is our problem. So we know when p is zero and one, uh, the invariant density is uh, is a delta function for for this uh, contraction map and uh, the the uniform constant for this Bernoulli shift, and we also know the Lyapunov exponent one being negative log two and one is positive log two, and we also know the dynamics that uh, the global contraction has a fig, uh, a point attractor which is at zero, uh, and for this Bernoulli shift we have the uniform like chaotic behavior. So what we want to know is this, uh, these middle ones in red. So when p between zero and one, uh, is invariant density unique? Uh, and uh, do we have a closed formula for that? Uh, and also for the Lyapunov exponent, when the, the exponent is exactly zero, and for the dynamics, uh, do we observe any intermittency phenomenon? So this, uh, this table is what uh, we are going to study. So the first part is about the ergodicity of the system. Mm. Uh, so I studied uh, this paper by Pelican, invariant densities for random maps of the interval. interval. And uh, he showed that uh, for p between a half and one, this random map t has a unique, uh, absolutely continuous invariant measure uh, with uh, the support of uh, all the unit, uh, unit interval. And uh, the invariant density rho of x, which depends on p, is piecewise constant, where I illustrated here. So at each sub-interval, it is a constant, and as x goes to zero, uh, this value of the constant will increase. And uh, so now I want to highlight some uh, uh, important points in, uh, in his proof. Uh, but before doing that, uh, I should introduce uh, the peron forbidness operator. So, Mm. So in general, in uh, dynamical systems, uh, if the system is chaotic, then instead of studying uh, individual trajectories, we consider a set of uh, uh, initial points and evolving according to our system. And we want to, uh, so this set of points are characterized by uh, probability distribution and we want to study how this uh, uh, distribution changes as time evolves. And this operator is the operator that maps the probability distribution at uh, time step t to time step t plus one. So if you work out the definition uh, of this operator, you will get uh, this, equa uh, this equation and then the invariant density it means that at time t and t plus one, the densities are the same. So it is simply the fixed point of this operator. So the invariant density uh, is given by this pt of rho equals to rho, uh, or write explicitly in our system is uh, in this form. And then uh, assuming that rho is a positive constant on this uh, right half interval, then we get rho is constant on each of these sub-intervals. So it's, uh, uh, the interval is like uh, 1 over 2n plus 1, 1 over 2 to the n. And uh, in each of these sub-intervals, we define two quantities. 
So this Rn uh, is just uh, the area under each sub interval, and this An is the amplitude of this uh, constant piece. And uh, simply, we have this uh, relation between Rn and An. And then integrating the uh, the poron forbidness operator equation and uh, a change of variables, we get the recurrence, re <coughs> recurrence relation uh, between the uh, a recurrence relation of these uh, uh, areas. And by working out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix A tilde, we can get the explicit forms of uh, the area ratio and hence the amplitude ratio. Uh, so this divides the dynamics uh, into three cases for p between a half and one. So the first case is when p is between two thirds and one, we have this uh, uh, area ratio approaches uh, a half and this uh, amplitude ratio approaches to one, which implies that uh, this uh, invariant density is bounded and approaches constant as p approaches to one, which is con uh, con consistent with, <coughs> with, uh, uh, with the fact that when p goes to one, we have this Bernoulli shift, and the Bernoulli shift has the invariant density as a uniform constant. And the second part, <coughs> second case is when p between a half and two thirds, we have this uh, uh, area ratio between a uh, half and one. So the amplitude ratio is larger than one, which means the invariant density is normalizable but unbounded because here the amplitude will uh, will grow. And the last case is when p approaches a half, this invariant density becomes non-normalizable and unbounded. And this uh, finished the proof of his theorem. So to verify the above uh, three cases, uh, we did some simulations for different values of p between a half and one. So the numerical setup is we start with uh, 10,000 initial points, randomly choosing between, uh, from the uniform distribution between zero and one, and each, uh, each runs, uh, runs for 10,100 uh, time steps, and for the, for the uh, probability distribution, so for the histogram, we discard the first 100 iterations to eliminate the transient stage. So here are the results. Sorry, this is a bit small, maybe. Uh, so from left to right, we ha uh, I, I decrease the value of p. So this is p equals to 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0.6, and almost 0.5. And I plotted here the time average probability distribution, uh, which uh, is somewhat equivalent to the invariant density. And as you can see, when p is 1, we have this uniform uh, density. And p is 0 0.9. Uh, so as p decreases, you will see this stepwise function, which uh, is in the Pelikan's theorem. And as p uh, goes to 0.5, this uh, will converge to the, uh, the delta function at zero. So here, this will go to infinity. And uh, because the system is agodic, so uh, by plotting the ensemble average, I get the exactly the same result uh, uh, as the time average. And in the last row, I also plotted the, the, uh, some typical trajectories for the corresponding uh, system. So when p is large, uh, we see this uh, chaotic behavior. But uh, as k, uh, p approaches 0.5, we observe this kind of intermittency phenomenon, which is, uh, 
which is a mixture of uh, a point, uh, a zero point attractor and uh, the uniform chaotic uh, behavior. Okay, so, so now uh, Pelican's paper only shows that the existence and the uniqueness of such an invariant measure, what we, what we want to do is to determine the shape of the, this curve for p between a half and one. So what we do is to try to find the midpoint coordinates of, uh, this uh, of, of each piece and uh, then extract uh, the closed formula for this uh, continuous curve. So first of all, using the fact that uh, the density is normalizable for p uh, within this region, we can get the first amplitude in terms of p. And then using the recurrence relation, uh, together with this initial condition, we will get the general form of a, a n, the amplitude. So the midpoint of the coordinates uh, would be written as this, provided p is not equal to two thirds. And then the midpoint curve is given by taking the limit uh, of n goes to infinity. So this is the exact form of the invariant density curve where a, b, and c uh, uh, are the functions of p. So let's uh, plot some curves uh, for different values of p. So here I plotted uh, together with the midpoints the different uh, values for, uh, of p for this invariant density curve. And as you can see, uh, when p approaches to one, uh, this density approaches the uniform uh, constant density. And when p uh, approaches a half, which is nearly this case, uh, we get uh, this Cp, so in the exponent, the Cp goes to zero, so that the invariant density curve uh, behaves like uh, one over x. And uh, moreover, when p is 0.8, uh, this, uh, this invariant density uh, follows a strict line where the convexity changes. And the second part is about the Lyapunov exponent. So, in, uh, so the Lyapunov exponent uh, uh, is, uh, is a quantity to describe the uh, exponential separation of two initially nearby trajectories. And here in the random system, we have three different averages. So time, time, ensemble, or noise average. So their general definitions are given here. So for the time average, uh, we have, uh, uh, we, we just average uh, along a trajectory where the, fir uh, the initial point is given in the attractor. And for the ensemble average, we, um, we average over space, provided that you know the invariant density rho here. And for the noise average, it's just a simply average uh, these two over noise. So we have two noise averages. And uh, agodicity means that the last two averages uh, are equal. So the Lyapunov exponent for our model so for the time average, we simply get uh, this uh, formula, uh, 2 p minus 1 log 2, which is independent of uh, the noise omega. Uh, and uh, when p is a half, we get this average exactly to zero. And for the ensemble average, uh, in our case, this is a random variable with this two peak delta distribution. Um, provided the p is not a half, because when p is a half, uh, we don't have a unique uh, invariant density, so that uh, this is not defined. And for the noise averages, uh, this, uh, this noise uh, average, the time average Lyapunov exponent, is just uh, have this nice formula for all p, but for the noise average, the ensemble average, we have this nice formula uh, for p not equals to a half. 
So the conclusion for our model is when p is not uh, a half, um, these two averages are equal, which means the system is ergodic. Yeah. So this is a summary. <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe a bit faster. So uh, this is a summary of uh, of my project. So in my project, uh, I explore the uh, the invariant density, the Lyapunov exponent, and uh, the corresponding dynamics for uh, for the system with p between 0 and 1. And we found that it can be divided into uh, four cases. So in the first case, when p is between 0 and a half, we have this delta invariant density. And uh, the Lyapunov exponent have this n nice formula. So here I just uh, simply wrote uh, lambda, uh, which means the time, uh, the noise, noise time average equals to noise ensemble average. And for the dynamics here, we have a global contraction on average which is different from the first one, because the first one, uh, we don't need to say the average because the system is deterministic. Um, and, uh, but this case, uh, we have some randomness in it. And in the second case, when p is a half, <coughs> we have uh, this delta density and also uh, an unbounded and non-normalizable density. And for this case, the Lyapunov exponents, uh, the ensemble average is undefined, but the time average is zero. And uh, in this case, we have non-stationary intermittency. Uh, and uh, the third case is when p is between a half and two thirds, we have this uh, invariant density uh, for which we have the explicit, explicit formula for the density curve. And this is unbounded and uh, but normalizable. And the dynamics is stationary intermittency. So stationary means we have this unique uh, invariant density. And for the last case, when p is between two thirds and one, the invariant density is bounded and normalizable. And the, the dynamics is just uh, chaotic, but uh, but this chaotic is different from when p is one, which is uniformly chaotic because here you have a mixture uh, with uh, the mixture of this uniform chaotic uh, with this uh, global contraction. Yeah. So mm, so these are the outlooks. So in the next step, we want to. Uh, go further, so we want to consider more general maps with, uh, a, uh, with these two um, maps, uh, where A is between this, uh, where we relax the value of the expansion rate and contraction rate. And for special combinations of this A and B, I think the Pelican's argument may still apply. So, yeah, and the next is to study the pro uh, properties of the corresponding poron forbidden operator, such as the spectrum of the operator. And uh, the third thing is to investigate the diffusions on the real line, which means we, ex uh, we lift our dynamics from the unit interval to the whole uh, real line, and, uh, yeah, and et cetera. And uh, here are the three main references used in my uh, project. And uh, so here I especially want to thank my three supervisors for, uh, for their valuable time and uh, inspiring discussion. And also thank for the LML for this opportunity. And uh, uh, above all, thanks all for listening. <laughs>
Uh, because here on the on the compact segment, mm -hmm. uh, uh, even if it is periodic, it, it is a circle. Mm -hmm. You have uh, a mixture of a system that is completely expanding and yes. another one that is contracting. Yes. If you consider to go for higher dimension, like a torus, in which you can consider to uh, measure preserving maps that are not contracting and not expanding, mm -hmm. like for instance uh, an Arnold. Arnold cat map and mm -hmm. elliptic system mm -hmm. of the same fashion mm -hmm. and, and to mix together because mm -hmm. maybe like this would be really interesting because you don't have a I mean you have the measure preserving property mm -hmm. so of course it would be uh, difficult to really increase uh, exponential <laughs> because you are dealing with a higher dimension yeah but yeah yeah Really yeah, yeah, but that that is also possible. I mean, this is just a toy model yeah, as the, uh, this short-term uh, project. Uh, but uh, of course, we can study different combinations of dynamics uh, to construct a more interesting random system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Questions? <coughs> so, well, thank you very much for this very good talk. Next year,